When we go to the gym, we lift weights in order to get really large and toned muscles. The more weight we lift, the more force we will need to generate, which means our muscles will get larger in order to move the weight. The same rule applies to the heart muscle. The heart is often referred to as a dual pump, meaning that the right and left sides are pumping blood to different circuits in the body. The right side pumps to the lungs, which is right next door, whereas the left side of the heart will pump blood to the entire body, so that side definitely needs to be buff. The right side of the heart, which consists of the right atrium and right ventricle, will pump blood to the pulmonary circuit. Blood that is collected by the right atrium and then pumped out by the right ventricle has a low concentration of oxygen. So its next stop is going to be the lungs, so it can pick up more oxygen in order to keep our cells alive. The right ventricle will pump blood into the pulmonary trunk, which branches into the pulmonary arteries. The pulmonary arteries will then continue to branch into smaller and smaller arteries and arterioles until we reach the capillary network. The capillaries are the site of gas exchange. The capillary network in the pulmonary circuit is where we will exchange CO2 gas for O2 gas. The now oxygen-rich blood goes into the venous side of the pulmonary circuit and begins to make its way back to the heart. On the posterior side of the heart, we will see the four pulmonary veins, two from the right lung and two from the left lung, all draining into the left atrium. The left atrium will collect and drain blood into the left ventricle, which will then pump the blood out into the aorta, which is the beginning of our systemic circuit, where this blood will provide oxygen to all the tissues of the body. The best way to visualize the differences between the right and left sides of the heart is to look at it in cross-section. Let's dissect the heart so we can get a coronal cross-section. We can see the right side and the left side over here. The two atria are separated by the interatrial septum, and the two ventricles are separated by the interventricular septum. We can also very clearly make out the layers of the heart. The superficial layer of the heart is referred to as the epicardium, aka the visceral layer of the serous pericardium. The next deepest layer is very thick in comparison and is called the myocardium. When you hear myo in anatomy, always think muscle. So the myocardium is the muscle layer of the heart. It consists of cardiac muscle tissue and cells that contract in order to generate enough force to pump the blood throughout the body. The deepest layer within the heart is the endocardium. The endocardium is a thin layer that lines all the chambers of the heart and the heart valves. We can also make out some structural differences between the right and left sides of the heart. You will notice the right ventricle has a much thinner myocardial layer when compared to the left ventricle. Take a moment to think about why this might be the case. We know that the right ventricle will be pushing blood through the pulmonary circuit. Well, where are the lungs? The lungs are very, very close to the heart. They're right next door. So since the lungs are so close, the right ventricle has a thinner myocardium because it does not have to work very hard in order to push the blood through the pulmonary circuit. This ventricle is the person at the gym lifting those 2.5 pound weights like it's nobody's business. On the other hand, the left ventricle is responsible for pushing blood into and throughout the systemic circuit. So the left ventricle has to be super buff in order to generate a lot more force in order to pump blood all the way down to our toes, which is why the myocardium will be much thicker. This ventricle would be the person at the gym curling 60 pound weights. By knowing this, it's going to be a lot easier to orient yourself when looking at cross-sectional images of the heart. Thanks for watching. For more educational videos, subscribe to the West Coast University channel below.